Okay, today we're going to go through how to disassemble and assemble a Smith & Wesson Model 29. Um, now this will uh, work for other Smith & Wesson revolvers like the 629 and uh, some of the 357 models, the 686, etc. Um, I, I haven't found a good video on YouTube of one of these being disassembled and reassemble so I figured I'd make one especially after all of the videos I've used um, to take my guns apart so anyway the first thing you want to do obviously is make sure the guns not loaded so we'll do that open the cylinder up no cartridges so it's unloaded and we'll go ahead and take the uh, the grip off and that's just a, a simple flathead screw Put that in, unscrew, and we'll take the grip off, and we'll go ahead and put the grip to the side, and at that point you'll turn the gun over, and you're going to take the, uh, the cylinder screw out here, which is right here under the middle of the cylinder, and you'll just unscrew that and take that screw out okay we'll go ahead and put that to the side and I like to kinda keep everything in order the way that I take it apart just kind of go from left to right and then when I go to put it back together you can just go back across the line and put everything back together so trying to keep everything in the order that we take it apart so we'll take the second screw out now and actually before you even take that second screw out um, take the cylinder out just push this uh, uh, thumb piece forward here, push the cylinder out, and then the cylinder just moves forward to to come off. So you'll just uh, move that forward, your cylinder will come off, and you can take your yoke out. It makes it a little easier to clean when you're cleaning it. Anyway, so we'll put the cylinder to the side here with the yoke, and then we'll continue taking this. Uh, Second screw out. And the final screw on the side plate. Now as I'm taking this uh, third screw out, the, uh, the side plate's kind of coming up. Now, some of yours might not do that. And, uh, what you can do to make the frame or the side plate come loose from the frame is take the back of a screwdriver and tap it until it comes out. So at that point you can just uh, pull that side plate off. And on some of yours, if they haven't been taken apart in a while, you'll really have to tap on it, maybe even a little harder than I did, to get that off. So. Uh, We'll get that uh, third screw out of the plate here. Okay, so we'll put our side plate to the side. And remember that third screw is a flat one, so make sure you keep it. I kind of just sit them back in the, uh, the side plate as I take them out, keep them in the, the right order like so. Just put it to the side so you don't forget where they go. Okay, now at this point um, we're to the inside and the first thing you'll do is take this, this is called the hammer block out, it's a safety type deal and this may have already fallen out as you were taking your side plate off if you notice if you tip it over it'll just come off so you want to take that and put it to the side, that's the first thing you want to get out of the way. Okay, 
Now, at that point, uh, the first thing we'll do is take the uh, the main spring off. Here's your main spring right here, and there's a, a tension screw uh, that you want to unscrew. Now, if you notice, mine's sticking out about eh, maybe a half a millimeter or so. Um, I've actually loosened it up a little bit to lighten the trigger pull slightly. Uh, most of yours will probably be screwed all the way in. Um, so, anyway, you want to kind of remember where the position of it is and uh, take it out. So you'll just unscrew that. And if you notice, as I'm unscrewing it, that, uh, that main spring will go kind of flat. So it's releasing all the tension off the back of where it connects to the back of the hammer. So, we'll unscrew that. You can actually, you don't have to take it all the way out. You can leave it in there. And then this will fall right out. And this is your main spring that connects to the back of the hammer with those two little prongs. So we'll put that to the side. And now, at that point, the next thing you'll want to take out is the hammer. And there's a couple things you'll want to do in order to take out the hammer. The first thing you want to do, obviously you can't pull it out now because it's past where the uh, firing pin goes in. But uh, you'll have to pull the hammer back a little bit. Now if you just press back on it, you'll notice it won't move. You have to push this thumb piece back towards the back of the gun that way in order to be able to pull the hammer back. Now, as you do that, and that hammer comes out to where you could pull it out you want to just put your finger on the trigger and hold it right about there and you'll be able to wiggle the hammer out at that point okay and then just release the tension off the trigger so now we've got the hammer out of course on the hammer this is where the main spring connects on the back here at your sear point the little spring in there if you wanted to take that out you would remove that pin and uh, pop the sear out. I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, so anyway, take your hammer, put it to the side. Okay, uh, the next thing you want to do is take off the, uh, uh, this is called the rebound slide. You want to take that out. Now there's a spring inside of there. So when you're taking that off, you want to be careful not to uh, lose that spring because it will fly out when you pop this up. So what I like to do is put a, like a rag or a old t-shirt over this while I'm prying it out and I'll show you while I'm doing that so we'll go ahead and put this down and what you want to do is kind of get that uh, get that started coming out so you want to take a screwdriver and kind of put it in the uh, you'll notice there's a round area on the back where you can get a screwdriver in and push it up just a little bit and if you can see it's already coming up now, before I push this the rest of the way up, I'm going to take an old t-shirt here and uh, put it over it so I don't lose that spring when it pops out. So just put that over and then pry up. Almost. Okay, you can hear it popped out. So there is the, uh, the rebound slide with the rebound spring right there. And you can just take that out now and you have a spring with a pin inside of it that goes up into the back of the trigger there where the uh, there's also actually a pin on the back of the trigger that goes in the other end of the slide here so take that and put it to the side now okay now at that point you're ready to take the trigger out now uh, I made this mistake the very first time I took it apart I took this I pulled this hand out which it will come out off of the trigger assembly. Now that's kind of difficult to get back on there, so I'm going to leave that on there for now. And you really don't need to take it off unless you're, you know, doing probably some kind of repair. Um, you can get in here and clean it pretty well, just leaving that on there. Um, so what you want to do to get that trigger out is first move that hand back so that it's not inside where the uh, where it pushes up to advance the cylinder. If you can just see, I'm kind of holding it there. It's on a spring. And then you'll just pull up on the trigger. And it'll come right out. Now, this is your trigger. 
there's where the back that goes into the uh, the rebound slide um, and this is your hand this is the thing that advances a cylinder now inside of here and get it up close so you can see it um, there's a, a little tiny spring and uh, that thing is that's the spring I was talking about that's kind of hard to get back in there um, if you do take it out so it's not impossible though if you've gotten this far you can do it but uh, just for uh, ease I'm not going to take it out right now so um, that's your trigger take the trigger put it to the side and now you're ready to take out the cylinder stop here and the cylinder stop of course the thing that stops the cylinder from going forward when you either pull the trigger or pull the hammer back so in order to take that out now there's a spring in the front right here uh, you want to be careful not to lose that when you take it out so let's uh, pull this out first you want to push down on the cylinder stop so that it's not going through up to the upper part of the frame and then just kind of push up with a screwdriver on the uh, the part that was going through that little hole there and then kind of work your way down towards the back of it now at this point you want to be careful because it's going to pop out and you don't want to lose that screw so we're going to keep working this okay it's almost out now And you could even put the uh, put your uh, uh, t-shirt or rag over this while you're doing it, just so that spring doesn't pop out. If you can see, it's it's almost out now. So we'll go ahead and uh, do that before we pop it the rest of the way out. Oh, there it is, and it did kind of pop out, but it hit my hand. So there's your spring. There's your cylinder stop and the spring goes in the kind of the bottom on the back there so that's how that goes so we'll put our cylinder stop to the side and now you're pretty much down to bare bones uh, the next thing you could take out is the uh, uh, the thumb piece here for your cylinder release that's fairly easy to do all you do is unscrew this screw remove that this uh, thumb piece will come off and then you can remove this whole little assembly right there I won't do that right now I mean if you've gotten this far you can uh, figure that out um, if you wanted to take the barrel off um, you can pop this barrel pin out and then uh, you want to have a good vice grip with some uh, something uh, maybe some nylon uh, little blocks you can put in there so you don't scratch your frame and then I find that those craftsman vices with the uh, the uh, rubber jaws on them work really well for unscrewing the barrel so um, but if you do do that don't put any of this part down here in the vise while you're turning this because it can twist the frame try and get your vise grip up as high as you can before you remove your barrel um, like I said you don't want to bend the frame so okay we're pretty much down to bare bones here so we'll go ahead and put it back together okay so and if you look up here I kind of got all the parts in the order that I took them out so we're just gonna go back down the line and put them back together so let's get our camera back straight here again okay now um, Obviously, uh, if you're not, your gun's not clean the inside, you want to clean all these little parts and uh, crevices out and put a little bit of oil on everything. Um, okay, so we'll go ahead and put our cylinder stop back in and the cylinder stop spring. So, turn this the right way here. Um, we'll go ahead and get it started on the pin. It's the first thing you'll do. And once everything is oiled, this will make it it'll make it a little easier putting it back together and at that point once you got it kind of started on there you want to press the uh, the spring in and again be careful not to uh, pop that spring out to where you'll lose it so got that spring start Oop, maybe not <laughs> I'm 
fell down in there. Okay, so get it started on the pin. Press your uh, spring down. Give me a little bit of trouble. Oop. Oop, spring came out. Okay. Let's start this over. Start this over really quick here. Try it again. And you can see it's almost in. And then we'll go ahead and just push it the rest of the way down. And you want to make sure that spring is in that hole and not bound up. And uh, you'll notice that everything, the tension is right on it now. So we got the spring in there. Now, at that point, you're ready to put the trigger back in. And when you put the trigger in, you want to make sure that this little pin right here is up. So, because it will go in with that down. So push that up and uh, that's, that's what goes into your uh, uh, rebound slide. And then pull the, hammer, the hand back, guide it onto the pin, and then you'll go straight down into the frame. You've got to get it around the uh, the cylinder stop too. So that'll go go in like that. And if you notice, that can go up and down. So everything's in there right. Okay, now we'll put our rebound slide back in. And the way you do that First, you want to make sure the pin and the spring are in. You start the end in by the trigger first. And that's where the uh, that little pin on the back of the trigger actually goes in to that hole there. So you want to make sure that goes in. And now, I find the easiest way to put this back in, the spring back in without it flying out, is using a 3 16 punch because it's bigger than the spring but smaller than the hole that it's going into and you can just kind of press that in straight into the gun and then uh, get your spring past that pin that's coming out of the frame and then press it down so we'll see if we can get it to go here the first time Okay, so we've got the spring just barely passed. And you just kind of lightly tap that in. And I'll use the rubber end here. Okay, so that went in fairly easy. That can be hard to get in sometimes. Um, and at that point, you can kind of pull the trigger and see that everything's working. Um, we're a little bit dry inside here, so I'm actually going to uh, lubricate it just slightly. You don't have to drown it or anything. Just kind of give it, get it in the parts that are moving around. Kind of work it a little bit. Yeah, it's a little smoother now. Okay, now at that point, you're ready to put the hammer back in. And this can be kind of tricky too, if you don't know uh, what to do. Um, the first thing you're going to want to do is pull this uh, thumb piece back again so that uh, you can uh, uh, 
put the hammer back in without that getting in the way and well even before you do that just kind of get the hammer started on there and make sure uh, this little pin right here is back and that's what uh, the main spring hooks to and uh, again pull the thumb piece back on the other side and you're gonna have to pull the trigger in about halfway to get it to where you can uh, pop the uh, uh, sear over that little bar on the back of the trigger. Okay, so you can see it's in now. Um, remember a few things while you're putting this in. Make sure this is up. Make sure you got your uh, left hand, or if you're right, left hand, your right hand would be on this, I guess. Um, and then uh, pull the trigger slightly to get that back down in there. Okay, and we'll put a little oil again on the contact points not too much and so we got our hammer in now um, the next thing you're going to want to put back in is the uh, the main spring and uh, you'll just uh, connect that to that little pin on the back of the hammer and then put it in at the bottom of the frame here and uh, keep some tension on that spring because it'll tend to fall out if you don't and then get your uh, your uh, set screw started there or your tension screw rather and then make sure that this is centered in the frame too you can see there's a little more space there so we're going to push it in just slightly to get it lined up straight and then you'll go ahead and uh, screw this uh, screw in to however far it was in before like I said mine was probably around a half a millimeter out so I'll put it kind of back to that point and at that point you can actually if you pull the thumb piece back again from the other side kind of pull the trigger to make sure everything's uh, working properly and you don't want to do that too many times because all these parts will start working their way up off of the frame again so I'm going to make sure they're all in there okay now we're almost ready to put the side plate back on um, the next thing you want to do is take this hammer block and uh, the part with the, the long hole in it will go around the pin on the, the rebound slide and the other part will go up towards uh, where the hammer is. So that goes on there like that with the uh, that pin going through that little hole right there. And that'll, that'll be kind of loose in there when you're putting this back together. And I'm going to give you a little pointer when you're putting this back on. Um, how to put the frame on without this thing getting all mangled and stuff. Um, or the side plate rather. Okay, so we're ready to put the side plate back on. So we've got our side plate here. We're going to remove our screws, keeping them in that order though. So one, two, three. Okay, and when you put the side plate back on, if you notice on the back of it, it has this little groove in it, cut to where you can, uh, where, that's where that little hammer block goes. So if you kind of line the top of that up with that hammer block first before you look at anything else, kind of guide it in, put the top in, then the one under the cylinder kind of goes in, and then uh, it should go flat. Oh. oh, okay, try that one more time. And sometimes you want to be careful because this thing will bounce off here really easy. And uh, you don't want to obviously screw this side plate down. If that's not on there, you could damage it. So we'll kind of guide that up again. And oh, just like that, it's back on. Now, uh, some of yours you may have to tap slightly. You don't want to press down too hard on this or hit it too hard. And if chances are something's not right if that side plate isn't going on there, you know, fairly easily. So. Okay, got our side plate on. Now we'll put our screws back in. We'll go left to right 
on this. So I'm going to screw that one in. And I don't quite tighten them down all the way yet. I don't get all three of these side plate screws in here before I do that. And before we put that last one in, of course, you want to put the, uh, the cylinder back in. There's your cylinder and your yoke. So you just put that back through there. Now that I find that uh, when you put the cylinder back in, if you line this up with one of the flutes in the cylinder, like so, right there, it'll uh, make it a lot easier when putting the cylinder back in the gun. So put your cylinder back in. Like so. Close it up. Now we're ready to put the uh, third screw in on the side plate. Okay. Snug it down. You want to put these too tight. Uh, but get them, get them snug. Okay, so we got our side plate screws back in. Of course, then you can kind of test it out and make sure everything's right. And it looks good. So we'll go ahead and put our uh, grips back on. Put this one on first. this side on and then uh, and get them started to where they just barely get snug and then make sure you're lined up and square and then we'll screw them in uh, the rest of the way again not too tight just snug and then that's it and we're ready to go All right, and that's how you disassemble and reassemble the Smith & Wesson 29. And like I said, that'll work on other models as well, the 629, uh, some of the 357s, the larger frame ones. So anyway, hope that helped.